Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another Diagnostic Questions tutorial video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the big one, feedback and dialogue. It was our most requested feature. It's my favorite feature on the website because it saves me hours each week. And I'll be honest with you, it helps me do my job quite a bit better. Now I'm going to be open and honest with you from the start. We've not got this working as smooth as it needs to and we're working on making this loads loads better in future versions of diagnostic questions but even as it stands I hope you'll agree that this is quite impressive and incredibly useful. So let me show you how it works. Um, imagine you've set your class uh, an assignment. So I'm just going to find an assignment that I've set to my year 11 class. So I'm going to click on assignments here now, again, a little tip that's going to come up when this page loads up um, is that if you ever can't see your assignments, and I certainly can't because this was my year 11 class from last year, um, you just need to change current to past and that's going to show you all the different assignments. I get loads of questions about that one. Um, and I'm going to find an assignment uh, from way back when because I know it's got a couple of tricky questions on there. So um, I'm going to find the, if I just move my annoying head out of the way, one of these essential skills uh, quizzes. So I'm going to click Essential Skills 2 and I'm going to click Insights. Now I've looked at in previous videos how you can use this Insight page um, to do loads and loads and loads of interesting things. But I want you to imagine that, um, that these results have just come in and you want to give some feedback to your students. Now as a general rule on a 10 question quiz I like to give two, pick two questions to give feedback on. And the way I find those is I change the sequence. Instead of ordering it 1 to 12 I'm going to order it by most incorrect answers. Now I find it's an incredibly useful thing because that straight away tells me that question four and question nine are causing problems. So here's question four there and I can see these are all my dots, all the students who've had a go. So this is a definite one that I'm going to add to feedback. Click add and up there, success question is added to the feedback station. Exciting stuff. Where is this feedback station I hear you say? Well, if you scroll down on the left hand side there, you'll see the feedback. Give that a click. Now this will then take you to um, a page that shows all the questions that you have added to feedback. So I can see my one there, new question there that I need to do. So click on that and it'll take me to that question. Now, um, a few things you need to be aware of here. This will show you all your students and all the answers that they've given. Um, you need to be familiar with the question um, because what, what we're gonna actually do here is we're gonna group feedback together by misconception. Um, so let's have a look at this. Um, answer A um, is x squared plus 25. And the question says, what is the area of the following shape? Now I'm looking at that and I, I think I can see what they've done there. They've done x times x and five times five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click there and that's gonna select all my students who've answered A and it's gonna open up um, the option for me to give feedback. Now here's the beauty of it. I don't have to, how many kids have I got there? Maybe like seven kids? I don't have to write seven pieces of feedback. They've all got the same misconception. So I'm just gonna write it once. Something like, uh, be careful, I think you have, uh, let's go for, I think you have not written this out as two brackets. Click OK and you'll notice as I scroll down here that every child who answered A has got that same piece of feedback. Now that might not be suitable for every child. Like Ethan here, I might know for example that Ethan, um, that when he was uh, answering this question, we actually did a lunchtime session. So I might say to Ethan, remember what we talked about at lunch. So a little personal one there, that's absolutely fine, that's in there. Um, now let's move on to the next one. Let's go for C. So what's C? 4x plus 20. What have they done? Well, I reckon they've confused that with perimeter. So I'm going to give that a little click. It automatically highlights all the students, who, students who've gone for C. And I'm going to go for something like, have you confused area with perimeter? <laughs> Help if I could spell perimeter. Okay, that's all saved there. Uh, D, students who think not enough information. I might give that a little click there and I might find the students who've gone for D and I might put, now I've noticed here that, that Michael hasn't explained why and Megan's put X squared add 10. I might put something like, why uh, don't you think, flipping egg, <laughs> I think uh, is enough info because I wanna know a little bit more about that and click okay. 
Now, uh, then I've got the students who've got it right. I need to give them a little bit of feedback. So uh, what I might be looking at here is any student who's got it right and got a good explanation, I might put something like lovely explanation or something like that, or whatever you want to do. But then some students may have got it right but look at that, Jack Illingworth, he's got it right, but I have no idea. Why? Because he hasn't put an explanation. I might put Jack, you need to explain yourself. And so on. Now, next thing to do, so that's all feedback to the kids. And look how quick that is. Now, I've not done the best feedback in the world there, but how long has that taken me? One minute, maybe? Next thing is I need to find a suitable follow-up question. So I'm clicking uh, right and left, and I might want something... Okay, that now this might be nice. Maybe I'll give them that. So I've given them one on area. Now I'll give them one on perimeter. Click confirm. Um, and that then places a tick there. That has gone to all my students will receive that follow-up question. Now in future iterations, we want to make it so you can choose different follow-up questions for different students and so on. But hopefully you'll find this useful as it stands. Now I'm going to click save feedback. Give that a click. And it tells me their success feedback sent. So now what happens with for, um, from the student's perspective. So I've logged in as uh, one of my students, Caitlin, and I'm just gonna refresh the page there because now this feedback's been sent. If she goes across here to feedback, hopefully, yeah, here we go, look at that, new feedback and follow-up question. So Caitlin clicks on this and it'll say to Caitlin, have you confused area with perimeter? Now Caitlin went for C, she might think, oh, flipping that, yes I have. And now, Caitlin's got a follow-up question to do, write an expression for the perimeter of this shape. So hopefully Caitlin now, based on that feedback, is thinking, all right, okay, yeah, um, let's make sure I get this right. So I've got two X plus one and another X is three X plus one. And I'm gonna have two lots of them. So maybe six X plus two. And I'm gonna put uh, the answer something like, for perimeter, I need to add the four sides together. 2x plus 1 plus x plus 2x plus 1 plus x and that'll do for there click tick brilliant caitlin's got it right now fly back over to me let's give this page a little refresh and next time i log in or whenever it is and i go to feedback session a section i can see look here follow-up question um, has been set that was the one click on there now only caitlin has answered so far but look i can see She's got it right this time. There's her explanation. If I need to, I can give her more feedback and a follow-up question and so on. So as I say, it's not perfect, but hopefully you can see that this idea of grouping feedback by misconceptions all of a sudden means you can give personalized feedback, but to groups of students. And hopefully, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but this saves me hours every week. And I do it, as I say, for a 10 or 12 question quiz, I choose two questions to really focus in. I give personalized feedback, set the kids a follow-up question. Give it a go, get using it now. And as I say, well, I promise we're gonna be working hard to improve this. Hope that was useful. Take care, bye for now.